Greetings, to Echo Zero, Papo Golf Sierra. Um, this is a review of the Floyd 10. It's a redrawn here already. Now, I've had this bottle of the Floyd 10 uh, for a while. Um, as you can see, it's not gone down that much. But, the reason I've uh, waited so long to do the review of this for the Floyd 10 is because it's a whiskey that. Well, like most whiskey, you want to spend some time with the whiskey. You want to get to know the whiskey over time before you review it or before you make a, um, a summary of the whiskey. Uh, because your taste buds change daily and your taste buds will change over time as well. The Laphroaig 10, probably most well known for being one of the strongest and most peatiest strongest in flavour, almost peatiest uh, of whiskies. Um, it certainly is very peaty. I suggest if you want to get into Laphroaig, this sort of peatiness, I suggest you work your way up, try some Talisker. Get yourself a bottle of Talisker 10, I've done a review of that on my channel, and um, some people might find Talisker too peaty. I ran into someone today who found Talisker uh, too peaty for them. So try your Talisker, and if you like that, you'll probably like the Freud. So yes, I would agree it's one of the most strongest, strong, most strong uh, peatiness of whiskey. Proper cork. I've had this bottle for um, probably a couple months, so the peatiness from the smell has died down a bit. Um, same with most whiskies, when you leave them for a while, the oxidization occurs in there flavors change, which is another reason why we want to keep the bottle for so long because the aromas and complexity changes of the whiskey. Uh, also, don't keep your whiskey around forever unless you properly preserve it to prevent further oxidation because it will spoil after some time. But it's sort of like it's like uh, aging. If you know you want to age it. You want to kind of age it a bit to get the different diverse flavours over time, but you don't want to spoil it. So anyway, this is a glass I poured not too long ago. Smoky. Smoky and very peaty smell. Ten year old, 70 centilitre bottle here. This is 40%. Now don't get turned off by the 40% because some whiskies are... 45%. You want to go with flavour, not with uh, strength. Very flavourful whisky. Their tagline is the most richly flavoured of all Scotch whiskies, and uh, established in 1815. Now, uh, is it here? This uh, is pronounced Lafroy, by the way, in case you want your pronunciation. And um, the smoke comes from a peat. And it's a, um, is it's a Isla, uh, Isla single malt Scotch whiskey. But, uh, yep, the colouring is, uh, I've forgotten a few facts about the Lafroy entry, but I'm not sure, that, I think the colouring may be natural. But don't quote me on that. Um, also the, uh, um, stuff is chill filtered I believe and uh, what's interesting is there's stills as well if you look up some documentaries on how this uh, Lafroig is produced it's quite interesting on the sort of stills they use in the process where they keep the oils they have to keep the oil especially on this sort of thing heavy piece they have to keep the oil back otherwise you get too oily but this is quite a relatively oily whiskey Okay, from this, from that taste there, yeah, you get a very earthy taste. Because I've had this bottle for a while, the sweeter notes have come out a bit more. Yeah, so sweet notes, earthy, peaty, very earthy. Um, when you first get a bottle, this is extremely smoky and peaty, but nothing that turned me away because I'm quite, 
I quite like the smoky tastes naturally. Um, very earthy, but as I've left this for a while, this bottle's been around for a couple, maybe a month and a bit. Nice sweet notes are coming through. Um, sort of a grassy almost, it's just got earthy taste. Definitely the smokiness comes through after. After you taste it, you want to let it just sort of sit in your taste buds for a bit. And you get the after after sort of smoky taste come through. It's just like a campfire. And that's particularly why I'm doing this review today because I poured myself a had a glass of Avalara Hour 12 earlier. Um, and then later on this evening I poured myself a glass of this Laphroaig. And this is the same glass I poured. It's still in the same glass. I've only poured in a small measure. Um, and this Laphroaig is definitely a comforting whiskey. It's very much like a homely whiskey. You want to keep a bottle around for when you want that home campfire feeling. And I believe that smokiness is what gives it that homely, um, cosy feeling because you fire is a, <laughs> a very instinctive uh, part of our culture. Uh, years ago, they date back instinctively years ago, centuries ago, and the smell of smoke and fire is a smell of uh, comfort and uh, warmth. That's exactly what this whiskey portrays. So yeah, I believe I paid £25 for this uh, Lafroy 10. Uh, I think, no, £26 actually, but uh, it, certainly that price or even at £30, definitely worth it to have a bottle around. But like I say, I would work your way up from maybe Talisker, try Talisker first. But, uh, very interesting whiskey and not much else. Well, you could say nothing else stacks up as close as this in terms of peatiness. Heavily peated. Very interesting and quite complex whiskey, although you may not think it. You may just think they chuck tons of peat in. Oh no. That's been refined. And that whiskey will crave that taste after a while if you've tried this and you're into smokiness. Uh, it's a bit like Lapsang's Fushong, if you know your tea. Big smoky smoke tea, if you like that, you probably will like this. But yeah, that's been a review of the 410. So, thanks for watching. This is 2 Echo Zero, Papa Golf Zero, signing out. Cheers.